I am making an Earthbound Immortal deck profile. This is a pure variant that I've been working on that I'm a bit sad about some of the cards I play just because I don't like them. But this is probably the best version of this deck that actually focuses on the Earthbound Immortals themselves. But overall, Earthbound Immortals probably been my favorite archetype since 5Ds was released. Just because I loved how the Earthbound Immortals actually looked in the show and their effects. And they work well with another card that I play in this deck that I really hope gets banned eventually. Sooner rather than later. Starting with the monsters, I play three copies of Angel Zero One. Angel Zero One has the effect of you can special summon it from your hand by revealing a level 7 or higher monster from your hand. You only use this effect of Angel Zero One once per turn. But while it's on the field summoned by its own effect, you get, gain one additional tribute summon. So basically how this card works is you can normal summon a monster, reveal uh, an earthbound immortal or greater line walker, special summon this card from your hand, and then immediately you can tribute summon. Then I play Two copies of Supe, just because you need them for the effect of Supe Dawn Walker. Okay. My bad, Supe Dusk Walker. Then I play two copies of Fire Ant Ascator for Ascator Dawn Walker. Then I play three copies of Supe Dusk Walker. And three copies of Ascator Dawn Walker. Dusk, well, each of these cards shares the same effect, of the, the only difference being which tuner they summon. Now they each let you discard one card, summon it from your hand, and then the corresponding tuner monster. So Ascator Dawnwalker summons Fire Ant Ascator, and Supe Dusk Dawnwalker summons Supe. But when you use that effect, you cannot special summon from the extra deck unless it, it's a synchro monster. Which isn't that big an issue since all the extra deck cards are synchro, so they're level 6 or level 8. Then I play 3 copies of Earthbound Greater Linewalker. Greater Linewalker can summon itself if you control a synchro while you have a synchro in Grave. And then once per turn, you can add one Earthbound Immortal from your deck to your hand. And if an Earthbound Immortal is summoned to the field while you control Greater Linewalker, your opponent's life points become 3000. So that just lets you OTK if you summon either Uru or Koka Pakapu. Then for the big monsters I play, one copy of Weir Kocharaska, one copy of Asila Pisku, one copy of Earthbound Immortal Kokoraya, the Kusalu, Chakuchalua, Koka Pakapu, and Uru. We are Coach Araska. All seven of these share the same effect. Uh, if there's not a field spell in play, they self-destruct. They cannot be targeted for attacks, but can attack directly. But they each have their own unique effects that, take at, that go after that, where We are Coach Araska lets you sent, put, return up to three other cards you control from your field back to your deck to then make your opponent discard an equal number of cards. Then it gains 1,000 attack for each card discarded. Koka Pakapu has the effect of if it destroys a monster in battle, your opponent takes damage to that monster's original attack. Uru lets you tribute a monster to take control of an opponent's monster to the end of the turn. I do believe that targets, though. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so you then take target one monster from control and take control of it. Kokoraya, if it's destroyed by an. And under any means other than by its own effect, it destroys all other cards in play. A Solapisku has the effect of if it is destroyed by any way other than its own effect, it destroys all monsters on your opponent's field, or all face up monsters your opponent controls, and then burns your opponent for 500 per monster. Chocolate has the effect of if it's in defense mode, your opponent's not allowed to enter that battle phase, and then once per turn, you can ha have it burn your opponent for half of its defense. But if you use that effect, you cannot attack. 
And then Kuslu has the effect of it would be destroyed in battle. You can then tribute one other monster you control so that's not destroyed, and then your opponent's life points are halved. But I just love these monsters since they were first introduced in 5Ds, and I'm still hoping Konami does the right thing and prints the Earthbound Servants. Moving on to the spells. I play one copy of Terraforming since this deck does rely on its field spells. I love it if Terraforming be it put to three and all the problematic field spells be put to one or bin. One copy of Set Rotation just because it gives takes a field spell from your deck and places one on your side of the field and your opponent's field face down. And while that card is face down, new field spells can't be activated. Which the field spells on then choose give my opponent either ma magical midbreaker field or oracle of Zephra. Midbreaker field has the effect of it can only be activated at the start of main phase one, and monsters on the field cannot be targeted. Or blah, blah, blah. monsters on the field cannot be destroyed by their opponent's card effects. Also, neither player can target monsters with card effects. So I just like this because this will further protect my Earthbound Immortals from my opponent's cards while also preventing my opponent from activating a new field spell. Because while it's on the field, neither player can activate a new field spell. I will first think this way. Let's see. Yeah, you cannot activate or set field spell cards. So this just gives my opponent a field spell to use. So if they're like invoked and they can't activate magical mid or Magical Mid Breaker Field. Then they can't activate Magical Meltdown. And then Oracle Zephyr, I only play and probably end up taking it out. But this is just a field spell I'll give my opponent if they can't, don't play Zephyrs. Because in order to activate Oracle Zephyr, you have to be able to search for a Zephyr. But I only play it in case Magical Mid Breaker Field's in my hand. And then I play two copies of Dark Spirit's Mastery. Dark Spirit's Mastery just lets you search for, you just discard a card to then add Earthbound Greater Line Walker from deck to hand. Then I play three copies of March of the Monarchs. This just makes the light tribute summon monsters you control cannot be targeted or destroyed by opponent's card effects. So I think it prevents from targeting. Yes. So this just helps to further protect the Earthbound Immortals. Since most of the time, if you control an immortal, it is going to be special or normal summoned. It will be tribute summoned. Then I play three copies of Demise in the Land because, again, you need the field spells. Then I play three copies of Earthbound Geoglyph. Geoglyph has the effect of if you synchro summon, you can then. Take one Earthbound Immortal spell or trap from your deck and, you, and add to your hand. And you can then use Synchro Monsters as can be used as two tributes or the Tribute Zone and Earthbound Immortal. And it has the effect of. Uh, if you control a level 10 or higher monster, then. Uh, or while any level 10 or higher mo level 10 monsters are on the field, my bad. It cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects, so it would further protects itself if you have an Earthbound Immortal in play. So if, as long as you have the Immortal, Geoglyph is protected, and as long as you have March and the Monarchs in play, then the Earthbound is protected. And then I play three copies of a card I still think should have been never been printed. There's three copies of Mystic Mind. Mystic Mind just says the the player who has the least amount of monsters can't activate monster effects, nor can they attack. And during the end phase, if both players have the same number of monsters, it self-destructs. This card isn't as dangerous as it could be in this deck, and that would be if I were to play three copies of Field Barrier, because then I would just sit on one Earthbound Immortal, activate this card with Field Barrier, and I would be hard to deal with. Unless my opponent has Cosmic Cyclone. But overall, I still think Mystic Mind, while actually very useful in this deck with uh, gathering resources, should still be banned. 
Then I play one copy of Earthbound Immortal or Ultimate Earthbound Immortal. This can only be activated while you have a normal summoned Earthbound Immortal. Once per turn, you just get a target while you control an Earthbound Immortal. You can target one card your monster your opponent controls and destroy it. And then again, because you need field spells, I play the one copy of Metaverse. That's it for the main deck, as much as I regret it, because I missed mine. I all right, now I'm moving on to the extra deck. For the extra deck, I play three copies of Star's Charge Warrior. One card Synchro Song, you can draw one card. So what I typically do with it is I'll summon if I control Earthbound Geoglyph, I'll summon this. Then go chain one, stars charge warrior, chain two, geoglyph. So you search for an earthbound immortal spell or trap. And then this will let you draw one card. Then I play one copy of Star Salt Warrior. Salt Warrior has the effect of when it's synchro summoned and you well you, if it's synchro summoned while you control no other monsters, you can target one. Okay, never mind. This doesn't do what I thought it does. Never mind, that's the effect of Star's Charge Warrior I thought this had. So, Assault Warrior should be literally anything else. I thought Assault Warrior's effect was it can attack all your opponent's monsters at once each, like Star's Charge Warrior can, but that is Charge Warrior. So I play one copy of Brianak, one copy of Iron Chain Dragon, two copies of Maturia Barkeon, this lets you discard any number of cards from your hand to target cards your opponent controls equal to the number of cards discarded and return them to hand. Ch Iron Chain Dragon has the effect of uh, when it deals damage to your opponent, your opponent then sends the top, I believe, three cards from their deck to the graveyard. And then Churia Barkeon, if your opponent activates a trap card, you can banish two cards from your grave to then negate that trap. I believe that's not once per turn. The only downside of Barkeon is that it has to be faced up to, in order to resolve its effect. So if Barkeon gets uh, ogred, then Barkeon is essentially needed. Then we play one copy of Moon Dragon Quia. Quia, if it's starting for an attack, you gain life points equal to half the attacking monster's attack. On the field, and then, and then if this card on the field is destroyed, you can target one Sun Dragon into your grave, especially on it. Then I play one copy of Galia Guardian just to take up on some monsters, since all your tuners and non tuners in the stack that you use for some resounding are Earth. One copy of Star of Spark Dragon just for further protection with the field spell. This Spark Dragon can once per turn target. Quick effect, target one face-up card you control. It can't be destroyed by bonus card effects. Or it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects till the end of the turn. Then I play Thought Ruler Archfiend, Cyframe Lord Omega, and Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. Thought Ruler Archfiend, if it destroys a monster in battle, you gain life points equal to that monster's original attack in the grave. And if your opponent activates a spell or trap it, that targets a psychic monster you control, and other cards, you can pay a thousand life points and then get the activation if you destroy it. Omega has the effect of during your opponent's standby. Okay. This effect is during your opponent's standby phase, you can take one banished card, return it to your graveyard, or return it to the owner's graveyard. And then during. Uh, once per turn during the main phase, clear effect, you can banish, have this card banish both itself and one card from your opponent's hand until the, until your next standby phase. And then if Omega is in your graveyard, you can have, have it target one other card in your graveyard, shuffle both Omega and the target card back into your extra deck. Then I keep doing that. Then Scarlet Rider during Archfiend can activate its effect where once per turn, it can destroy as many special signs effect. Attack position effect monsters on the field as possible as long as they are equal to just as strong or weaker than Scarlet Red Iron Archfiend. And then burn your opponent 500 for each one destroyed. And then to finish off the scene heroes, I play the one copy of Sun Dragon Inti. If Sun Dragon Inti is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, it destroys the monster that destroyed it. 
And then if this card in the field is destroyed, then you can target one Moon Dragon Quia in your graveyard, especially <coughs> summon it. Right, right. During the standby phase in the next turn after this card is destroyed, you can target one Moon Dragon Quia in your grave, especially on it. And with that, uh, my that is the end of my uh, Earthbound Immortal extra, de er, extra deck and deck file. If you have any ideas of what I can do to improve the deck, any other decks that I can see me make, or uh, any decks I can see face each other, feel free to comment those below. Thanks for watching.